showing main screen. Sorry, I was not sharing my screen. So, backtrack. My bad. I'll uh, I'll restart. So we have a a, a puppet enterprise a master and agent uh, ready here in the. Uh, in my terminal, you can uh, you can see a, a puppet master and a uh, an agent. The puppet master is uh, uh, is very uh, very empty. So we have we are in the standard uh, path for puppet enterprise for for puppet uh, production code, uh, etc. Puppet Labs code environments production, as you can see it here. Um, but there is no uh, code in here. So if we look at the site.pp, it's completely empty. There is also no, uh, there's a few modules in there that I put in there uh, during the setup of the Puppet Master, but they are not uh, being used anywhere yet. These are just the uh, standard modules that we'll be using in a minute. So how does this all work? We, in order to, uh, to create a, uh, uh, an R10K uh, repository, we need uh, what is called a, a control repository. And this control repository will contain uh, our modules, our, our, our custom puppet code, and some, uh, some extra uh, information. We will be editing the, uh, the control repository on our uh, host system. So here on the left, this uh, Walter Heck in Playground R10K webinar, this terminal is looking at my host system. And we will create a control repository. We'll create it completely from scratch. So I've prepared a page here uh, to create a new uh, a GitHub repository. We'll make a GitHub repository called R10K Webinar Con Control. I'll actually make it under my own account. Um, a description, we'll make it public for now to make it a little bit easier. And that should be it. Um, so we just click Create Repository. It creates an empty uh, uh, Git repository. And I can now use the, uh, link to say, OK, git clone the R10K webinar control repository. That just creates an empty directory on my local uh, uh, machine. So. If I if I uh, go into the directory, you see my editor. Uh, it's completely empty. The first thing we will need to do is create two files. One is called the uh, the puppet file, and the puppet file just contains a, a, a list of the uh, of the modules that we want to uh, be using. So the, the good thing about uh, uh, having these control repositories is that instead of having to download all the modules ourselves, we list a, uh, we make a list of all the uh, modules that we want to use and their versions. And by using that, every time we deploy, we can make sure that we deploy exactly the, the same modules in the same, same versions. We save the file as a uh, puppet file. That has to be the name, so when uh, R10K is doing a deploy, it will uh, look for a file called puppet file in each uh, branch of the repository and create a puppet environment out of that uh, uh, puppet file. So that's the first uh, file that we need to create. The second file is the so-called environment.conf. It's not a mandatory file, but it will be useful, as you will see in a second. environment.conf. What we do in the environment.conf is we set the, the site.pp file. This uh, depends on whether you're using uh, the Puppet Enterprise Console for classification or the open source uh, 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 master. Um, but it's good to set it either way. And the second thing we do is we set the module path to modules, site, and base module path. Uh, the colon is a separator, so we set the module path to three three values here: modules, site, and base module path. Base module path contains whatever the uh, the puppet master has set as the uh, main module path, and the modules and site uh, uh, settings are referring to directories. So we have to create two direct two directories here: modules and 
site. We also create a manifest directory so that we can create our uh, site.pp. And we'll just leave it empty for now. So now we have uh, on our host system, uh, we've created, uh, sorry, uh, a directory uh, with just a puppet file, environment.conf, a site.pp, and three directories, manifests, modules, and site. So if I go into that directory right now, R10K webinar control. So now I'm in the control repository. Uh, when I look at the um, puppet file, I have now these modules here. Uh, what I've done is also I uh, used the my host operating system is macOS, as you can uh, no doubt see. Um, I have uh, also installed the uh, R10K gem uh, on the on macOS, uh, which allows us to do R10K puppet file install. When we say R10K puppet file install, it will take a minute. Um, it goes through the puppet file and it installs all the modules that are uh, listed in that uh, in that file into my uh, modules directory. So now, when I look at my modules directory, I have here Apache, Concat, Standard Lib, and VCS repo. What we're going to be doing here uh, in, during this webinar is uh, just create a very simple. Uh, Apache uh, installation just to show you how the how it works. Um, so the modules directory now contains my Apache Concat standard lib and VCS uh, repo modules, and my site uh, mod, uh, directory is still empty. In my site directory, I will create my role and my profile module. Let me use a site.pp so that later on this can be used by open source uh, people as well. Uh, node test client.olandata.vm, just a simple test node. Include role web server. There we go. Now we have to create that role, of course. New folder, manifest, new file, class role, web server, Normally, you would have a base profile, but I'll uh, be commenting that out for now because we want to focus on the art and case stuff. Uh, so include profile Apache. That means I have to create a profile called Apache. Uh, I have a new file. Sorry, where's the directory? A directory called manifests. And then I create a file called Class profile Apache include Apache. This will include the base class, the base Apache class from uh, from this uh, module. I'll add one uh, um, a parameter for it to it to uh, just to show you that it's working. So we'll set, for instance, server admin to something else than the default. Uh, Was it server admin? Yeah, one word. Server admin no, 
note that I'm doing all of this from the top of my head for now because I exactly want to make mistakes so that we can we, I can show you how the, the whole process works. So we call it apache.pp, very simple. So I now have in my modules directory, I have Apache, Concat, Standard, Lib, and VCS repo. These are the standard modules that are downloaded from, uh, from GitHub uh, or actually from the Puppet Forge. And uh, then I have my role and my profile. So I have a, a, a web server role that includes just the profile Apache. And here I have the Apache profile that includes just the Apache class. Uh, nothing very, uh, very exciting. And here we have on test client .vm, uh, include role web server. So test client .vm is this one. So puppet config print cert name, uh, which happens to be the same as fqdn. As host name, uh, they should. So I've created a whole bunch of stuff on my host now, but none of it is yet on the uh, Puppet Master. And this is where things actually get a bit more interesting. So what I will want to do now is um, on my host system, uh, let me see. Yeah, on my host system, I'll open this thing in source tree. I have now a whole bunch of uh, um, Git changes, but obviously I need to git ignore the modules directory. So I'll say ignore, ignore everything beneath modules. Blam. So I have a git ignore. Let me first commit these uh, three. So set up the basic control structure. And next up, There we go. And then I push my changes to the master. There we go. Now, if I look at the um, control repository, if I refresh this page on GitHub, now we see our files in here. Um, we see one more thing, though. We are on the branch called master. And what we actually want to do is change the branch called master to To rename it manually. So what we will do is we will rename the master branch to production. It's not mandatory, but it will make life a little bit easier, and you'll show in a, you'll see in a minute why that actually is. Uh, we'll push the branch to origin. And now we have here are two branches, one called master and one called production. And what we want actually is to use only the production branch and not the master uh, branch. So we will switch this to production update. I understand. Now we, will go. Now we can delete the master branch. So we can say here, master delete. So we are left now with one uh, branch called production. Uh, that will be our uh, production branch for now. OK, so now we have everything in place that we need in order to uh, start deploying this uh, with, uh, with R10K. Um, so one of the things that we do is uh, we set up on the Puppet Master, we need to set up, we need to tell the Puppet Master where to get its uh, its R10K uh, file. So uh, in order to do that, we set up a uh, 
etc are rtnk.yaml and in that rtnk.yaml we set I have to cheat a little bit Take a quick look in this one. Oh wait, we already have it here. Apologies. So we have here a um, a file, uh, an Art&K uh, installer, uh, uh, sorry, a Puppet file to, uh, a Puppet manifest to install our, uh, our Art&K uh, stuff. And this we will use for uh, deploying the, um, So for now, we store it uh, uh, right here. Um, we don't actually need the git deploy key for this case because we have a public repo. So this would normally be part of your uh, deployment of uh, your uh, provisioning process on the master or you would have uh, code on the master that actually uh, does this uh, uh, this art and k class uh, but for now we will run it manually um, the only thing we need to do is here set the remote correctly so it's all in data it's actually walter heck slash art and k webinar control So we create an SSH key, which is also not absolutely necessary in this case. Normally, you'll have a, a your uh, R10K repository, your control repository will be a private repository, and then obviously uh, things get a bit more complicated because you'll have to deploy uh, uh, the SSH key. Uh, you'll have to deploy uh, the um, the control repository by creating an SSH key and and adding it to the trusted keys for the uh, for that repository. But in this case, that's not necessary. So the only thing we're doing here is creating an SSH key on the, uh, on the master that uh, trusts uh, the um, uh, github.com server. And then here, uh, we create an r10k.yaml file. Um, we set the, uh, the source uh, of the r10k.yaml uh, to r10kwebinarcontrol.git, and uh, that's it. I'll show you. The resulting config file that, uh, that uh, um, creates. So we do up puppet apply uh, rtmk setup. Giving me some error, uh, meaning that we, because of the uh, dumbed down version of this uh, code. There is no uh, .ssh directory, so I'll just create it. There we go. So now it created the r10k.yaml file um, with the uh, specified content. So what that looks like, you can either set this up manually, or you can do it in the uh, using this uh, this code that I'll I'll upload this code as well to the um, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, sorry, it's etc. Puppet Labs R10K R10K.yaml. So the only thing it did is it created this uh, um, um, uh, 
uh, this file um, that sets a, a few things. We have here the cache directory that sets the cache of where R10K stores the Puppet modules that download, so that it doesn't have to download every time over and over. And then um, we define one or more sources. In this case, we have only one source, uh, which is our uh, environments directory, and we uh, get the control repository from this remote. Now comes the interesting thing. What Art10K actually does when you uh, when you uh, run it, uh, it will uh, create a clone, a Git clone of this direct uh, of this uh, repository, and then it will create a Puppet environment for each and every single uh, branch in that control repository. Right now, we have only one branch. It's called Production. So what you should see happening is uh, if we look into our environments directory we have here right now only the production uh, directory but that production directory contains a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff already so we have here for instance the modules directory contains a whole bunch of stuff but this is not the stuff that I want there the stuff that I want there is what we have here in our uh, in our actual control repository this one So I've created my commits for the, uh, the R10K webinar control repository. I've pushed them to the master. And we have now time to run R10K uh, deploy environment. And then for clarity's sake, we do dash PV debug. And then we get a permission denied because of the ah, SSH key that doesn't exist. So for now, we can get away with um, adding the SSH key here. So I'll do Um, easier, maybe I'll switch the uh, R10K, sorry, R10K file to download through HTTP. Uh, there we go. typo. There you go. So now you can see the debug run. And we can see um, the uh, R10K deploy environment dash PP debug. The first thing it does is it fetches the control repository to determine what branches there are. Then it sees, OK, we have one environment called production. It deploys that environment, and then uh, it, re it replaces the existing uh, production environment and uh, uh, creates. With, so that was the, the production directory that was already there. And now it replaces that with, with what, what, what was in the control repository. And then it deploys the four modules that we have de defined in our, uh, uh, in our control repository. So now if I go into uh, the production environment, I'll see that it matches nicely the um, uh, production environment that we've specified in our Git repository. So then we should be able to go on our master and run puppet agent-t, and that should just install Apache. You can see it removing a whole bunch of facts and plugins and, uh, and all these kind of things. The reason is that, obviously, we have changed the modules that are running on the master, so uh, or that are installed on the master. So the, uh, 
the, the client syncs its uh, environment with the, the master. And now we have here uh, on port 80, we have Apache running, as you can see. So that was fairly easy. But now, let's say we want to make an actual change. Uh, in an actual uh, real life environment, we wouldn't want to uh, make that change directly on the uh, production uh, uh, branch. So how do we do that? Instead of uh, working on the production branch here, we create, in our control repository, we create a new branch called um, feature, sorry, maybe I'll call it Walter feature vhost. Um, I use slashes between the, uh, the uh, as a separator for the, for the parts of the uh, git branch so that uh, uh, source tree uh, nicely creates directories uh, or folder uh, folders out of it in the branches. This works exceptionally well if you work with multiple developers on multiple features uh, or you have a lot of uh, different uh, feature branches, then uh, this is nice for organization. You can, of course, also use underscores. So I create a branch called Walter Features vhost, and I switch to that branch. So now if you look at my uh, host machine, it's switched to Walter vhost. What I can do now is say, OK, I will go into my Puppet file, and I'll add a, uh, a Puppet file, uh, sorry, a Puppet module here. So I'll add Puppet Labs MySQL. In order to know the version, the easiest way is to go to uh, the Puppet Forge and go to the um, how do I say that the page of the of the module that you want to do, want to use. Then you can see here at the bottom of the first screen, version three six two is the latest version. So I'll add here three dot six dot two. So I've updated my Puppet file. And the other thing is I need to look at the dependencies because uh, Puppet Enterprise or the, Puppet, uh, the R10K doesn't have dependency resolvement. So what happens is that when you specify a module and that module has re uh, dependencies, you have to specify those dependencies as well. So we need to add Nanlu staging uh, module, which is at version 103. So I add back into my I add mod. Now you staging one dot zero dot three. Is that correct? Yes, one zero three. So now I have made some changes here, and let me uh, update my profile, for instance, and I say, okay. Uh, Apache colon colon vhost let's take a standard vhost from the documentation So I've added a, a vhost uh, for var ww vhost, and that's it. So now if I go back to my source tree, it'll tell me, hey, you have a bunch of changes. Yeah, so we added a few new modules to the, uh, how say that, to the Puppet file, uh, which means also locally I can do another uh, R10K Puppet file install. It was an illegal option the last time, and it still is. So by running that R10K uh, puppet file install, it will install the modules that are in whatever uh, Git branch that I'm in right now. So now in our modules directory, you can see that it has installed the MySQL and the staging module here. My source tree will ignore them because they're in uh, under the modules directory. So now I have here the puppet file. Let me 
make a new commit. And then I push my changes to my branch remotely on GitHub. So now on GitHub, uh, if I refresh here, I see that now I have two branches. I have a production branch and I have a Walter feature vhost uh, branch. And my vhost branch is uh, a little bit ahead of uh, my, um, my production branch. What I'll do is I'll already create the pull request and I'll say, don't merge this yet. Still testing. The advantage of creating the pull request early on is that you can already see which files were changed nicely. You can have, start having a discussion and other people in your team can also already see what you're uh, about to change. Um, so that's uh, that's quite uh, quite nice. You can also see if there's no conflicts with the base branch. And as you uh, push commits to the Walter feature vhost uh, branch, they will automatically appear in your uh, uh, pull request. Um, so I've updated my uh, branch called Walter feature vhost, and now I want to deploy this. Um, I go back onto my Puppet Master. And the only thing I need to say here is rtmk deploy environment dash pv debug again. Uh, let me move out of this directory. So normally you can have a git hook that automatically does this uh, uh, for you every time you push to GitHub, or you can have a polling polling mechanism with a, a cron job that runs every five minutes. It's up to you how to uh, run that rtmk deploy command, but that uh, that's the one that you will want to run. So um, now, if we look, we, we say, okay, we uh, fetched the control repository to determine the branches. Then it says, hey, the, the Walter feature vhost uh, branch contained uh, non word characters. So it, uh, R10K automatically renamed it to Walter feature vhost. And then it starts deploying the uh, production environment. And after that, it deploys the Walter feature vhost uh, um, environment. So now when I look here, I have a production environment and I have a Walter feature vhost uh, environment. Now what the cool thing is, remember my agent here, my agent obviously by default runs in the production environment, um, but I can now run it in, and this will fail, but we'll see in a minute why uh, it will fail. Um, we can run it in the production environment. Uh, Sorry, in the Walter feature vhost environment, because that's the one that contains my new uh, uh, code. So if I run this in open source Puppet, everything will be fine. If I run it in enterprise Puppet, you'll get this error message, or you won't actually get an error message. Uh, what happens is that uh, it says, hey, the local environment, Walter feature vhost, is not the same as the, uh, the environment that's dedicated by the, or that's dictated by the master. So I'm using whatever the master is saying. Uh, that's great. Uh, master uh, dictated uh, environments are great, except for when you're doing lots of development with uh, with R10K. So what we do is we go into the classification uh, um, of the Puppet Enterprise uh, console. We go to the... Um, to, 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 to the rules for the uh, production environment. And we, for now, we just remove this, this is obviously for your uh, development environment and not for your actual production environment. And then we have here in the agent specified environment, um, we want to make sure that for this node, testclient.olandata.vm, we put it in the agent specified environment node group, which means that any node that is in this node group will uh, be able to specify its own uh, environment. So after we did that, now we can run puppet agent dash t dash dash environment again. And now you see here at the top that it doesn't uh, anymore uh, switch the environment automatically to production. Instead, it allows us now to use our own environment. So.
So it ran Puppet, and we'll see here in between the lines that it has created some uh, uh, some vhost uh, for us, and we can see that by running etc conf.d 25. And here is our virtual host. OK, so let's say that I'm very happy now, and this is exactly the code that I wanted. Now comes the part of getting this back into the uh, production environment. Um, so we've already created the pull request. And now that we know that it's uh, that it's good, we can say, OK, approved, merging. We confirm the merge. And then we can delete the branch. Uh, it's important to keep your branches that you no longer need uh, to delete them, because as you've seen, Puppet uh, or Art and K creates a, um, a Puppet environment per uh, uh, branch that you have. And unused branches will just slow down your Art and K runs, because they'll create uh, uh, environments and download the modules every time while you don't actually uh, need them. And with Two branches, this is not a problem. With 10 or 20, it becomes annoying at best. So I'll just go and delete the branch. And now, if we go back to our code, we have only one branch left. And that has our merged uh, code in it. So you see here. Um, our new profile Apache. So after the merge, I can still run again one more time art and k deploy environment pv debug. There we go. Now we have only one environment left. Um, you can, if you want to, um, specify uh, specific uh, environments only. So by doing this, if I now create, let me see. So on your production Puppet Master, I would recommend running Art and K separately. And on your production Puppet Master, have only one branch, and that's the production branch. Uh, in my personal opinion, the um, production Puppet Master should run only production things, and that also goes for the code environment. So the uh, production Puppet Master only runs the production uh, uh, environment, and all the other, uh, and your your Test Puppet Master can run any uh, uh, environment that you uh, that you want. And that completes the circle. Now you can go and branch uh, one more time, create changes, and then push the, uh, push the changes, test them this way. And then once you're happy, you can go and uh, go on and uh, um, deploy. So that uh, completes our, our our webinar for today. Um, I'll be taking questions now. So if you either uh, put them, uh, if you put them in the questions uh, box, then uh, I can uh, um, uh, answer any questions that you uh, that you have. I'll, or you can raise the. Um, uh, you can raise your hand in the. Uh, attendee window and then I can uh, can give you the uh, um, microphone if you want to talk instead of uh, type if there are no questions Christian is uh, asking, is this fully compatible with uh, with Puppet 4? Let me ease your mind um, to show you that this is actually running. Uh, um, let me see. We are 
in here. We are running the latest and greatest Puppet server, 2234 of the Puppet Enterprise uh, uh, Puppet server, and that is actually Puppet 4, uh, uh, the latest version. So this is literally the latest uh, Puppet Enterprise version uh, out there, and that is uh, uh, far beyond Puppet 4. So um, Puppet Agent version is 431 at the moment. Uh, Balamurugan asks, is there any difference in setting the, the master and agent setup with Puppet Open Source and Puppet Enterprise? There are differences, but for R10K, it, uh, it doesn't matter. They are, uh, they are exactly the, the same. So uh, what you saw was me doing this on Puppet, uh, Puppet uh, Enterprise. Uh, on Puppet Open Source, there are small differences, but the, the uh, principle works exactly the, the same. All right, I think that's all for the questions. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope you learned uh, uh, a bunch. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me uh, um, uh, either by email, uh, walterheck at olandata.com. Let me share it here. or on Twitter, Walter Heck, and I'll be happy to, uh, to help you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.